Welcome everybody to this month's sustainability practice group. Uh, today's presentation on what happens on a job site can make or break a green project um, will be presented by both Grady O'Rear as well as James Scott Brew. A little bit about today's speakers. Grady O'Rear is president and CEO of Green Advantage Incorporated, a national nonprofit organization that certifies building related personnel and green building practices. Uh, you can learn more at www.greenadvantage.org. He is also an environmental consultant and is the developer of EcoVillage in Loudoun County, Virginia, an environmentally friendly, socially responsive community 40 miles northwest of Washington, D.C. For more information about the community, it can be found at www.ecovillages.com. Grady was formerly the founding president and CEO of Waystation Incorporated, a comprehensive nonprofit mental health organization. More information at www.waystationinc.org. Named as a point of light by the White House, the agency offers treatment, rehabilitation, housing and transportation services, and has developed scores of homes and two commercial facilities. The 30,000 square foot rehabilitation and national training and education center built in 1991 has been considered one of the country's most energy efficient office buildings. In partnership with the George Washington University Center for Health Policy Research, it has provided consultation or technical assistance to over 200 government and private disability agencies from over 25 states and eight countries. His education includes a BS in education and an MA in clinical psychology. Our other speaker today, James Scott Brew, is a principal architect and senior building scientist with the Rocky Mountain Institute, where he specializes in creating sustainable homes, buildings, campuses, and communities. He has over three decades of design and construction experience and has completed hundreds of projects in historic preservation, healthy, high-performance, low-energy homes, and buildings extending from the U.S. to Asia, Australia, and Europe. With that, I'd like to hand it over to Grady to start with today's presentation. Thank you, Matt. It's a pleasure to be with you today. We at Green Advantage are grateful to CSI and to you for this opportunity to present. This webinar focuses on three things. The first is some of the problems related to a lack of green skilled builders on projects. Second, we'll examine how construction workers can become more skilled in green building through Green Advantage certification. And third, we'll review the pivotal role specifiers and others influencing specifications play in ensuring that green skilled construction workers are available and working on projects. As you know, and as you can see from these photos, more and more building projects are going green. And more of them are seeking third-party certification. This dramatic increase in green building demands more green-skilled workers. However, McGraw-Hill has determined that 86% of A&E firms find green skilled workers difficult to hire, and 91% of contractors find green skilled employees difficult to hire. This shortage of workers translates into lower quality construction and reduced building performance. Specifications can either perpetuate or help solve this problem. To illustrate the dilemma that's experienced in the field, let's take a look at two hypothetical contractors, Joe and George's firm and Sally and Danny's company. Next slide. Joe and George run a contracting firm that does about $10 million per year. They do commercial and residential work. They're glad to still be in business in this difficult economy. About 20% of their company's jobs are green. Joe and George have very limited funds available, so they don't have personnel training and credentialing outside of what is required by regulation or contracts. Two people on their team are lead accredited. Their business formula is straightforward. Keep the management team small, take on whatever work they're able to find, and bring in subcontractors sparingly as needed. Let's next look at Sally and Danny's firm. They typically do design-build projects. Last year, they did about $20 million in commercial work. Their business strategy is to have 75 to 100% of their jobs green. 
they're now to 60% of that goal. They have a small management team, and they have select green-skilled subcontractors they use for all of their work, green or not. 80% of their contractor and subcontractor supervisors and crew are Green Advantage certified. Both construction firms face similar problems in delivering successful green construction projects. In the next series of slides, we'll see some examples of these problems, and we'll mention some Green Advantage certification best practice remedies. You've probably seen this situation on a job site. A protective duct cover is missing. It might have never been installed, or it was torn off and never replaced. It's an open invitation to dust and debris to contaminate the ductwork. Logically enough, the Green Advantage best practice is to keep protective covers over the ducts throughout construction. But there's an additional Green Advantage recommended best practice that's important here. Sometimes the missing duct cover requires a ladder to fix. Recent research tells us that more ladder use due to this problem results in more worker injuries. So Green Advantage also includes in its study guides the green best practice of using a pre-installed covering for open air ducts. Pre-installing the duct cover on the ground reduces fall hazard exposure from ladder use. The picture on the left in this slide is a fresh air intake that is located next to a loading dock in a parking area. In the picture on the right, the fresh air intakes are next to the exhaust vents. Green Advantage best practice calls for locating fresh air intakes to avoid these problems. It also advises workers to do several more things. First, visibly mark the fresh air intakes. Second, use additional filtration to shield fresh air intakes. And third, make sure fuel-powered equipment idling vehicles, outdoor smoking areas, and other pollution sources are separated from air intakes. This slide represents some, quote, eco-safe, unquote, products that were purchased and used by a worker. Unfortunately, the products contained hazardous ingredients. Green Advantage Best Practice warns workers to look beyond claims such as environmentally friendly and eco-safe. Instead, Green Advantage recommends workers choose products rated by respected independent third parties, such as Green Seal. In this slide, we see CFLs and tubular fluorescent lamps put in a trash bin. As you might know, both of these products contain mercury. Green Advantage suggests three best practices to remedy this problem. One, treat and dispose of these burned out lamps as toxic waste. Two, provide storage space for electronic items to be discarded like fluorescent lamps, HID lamps, batteries, and electronics. And three, follow safety and disposal requirements from the jurisdiction or EPA, whichever is the higher standards. In this slide, a worker is penetrating the building envelope after sealing has begun. Unless properly addressed, this type of activity can compromise the integrity of the building envelope and reduce the building's performance. To prevent this problem, once sealing of the building envelope has begun, Green Advantage recommends that supervisor authorization be required for workers to penetrate the envelope. We learned of this best practice from an architect who designed and performed construction administration on a passive house. The superintendent required drills to be checked out through him if needed to penetrate the building envelope. It worked well, and because of this and other best practices, the house went on to meet the passive house standard. It was the first house in the Washington, D.C. area to do so. James Brew, who is presenting today with me, recalls receiving a panic call prior to when the green building radar was set to arrive on a project. The smell of VOC fumes was obvious in some parts of the building. As it turned out, a high VOC sealant was being used in an elevator by a well-intentioned but uninformed worker. Of course, Green Advantage best practice recommends use of zero or low VOC sealants and other products, but it also urges workers to investigate consumer ratings to determine product performance differences. This includes checking into warranties that back up product claims. This is an important practice in order to better ensure the low or no VOC product selected 
is user-friendly and adequately does the job. In this example, a worker is injured dumpster diving to separate recycling. According to recent worker injury research, this problem is another hazard that is particular to green projects. It also requires additional labor to enter the dumpsters and sort the materials. On top of this, in some cases, traffic increases because the dumpsters need to be moved. And because of increased traffic, workers have greater exposure to struck by and struck against injuries. To address this problem, Green Advantage Best Practice recommends contracting with a recycling company to collect and recycle commingled waste. The waste management company can provide containers on site and then haul them away to process commingled waste in a controlled environment. Not only does this prevent dumpster diving, it's also been found to improve housekeeping on site. In this slide, we contrast the predicament of Joe and George's team and Sally and Danny's team. Both teams have to address the problems we just reviewed and many other construction problems. But Joe and George's firm is particularly challenged because they haven't specialized in green construction and hardly any of their crew are trained and certified. Danny and Sally's firm decided to develop a company goal of 100% of their crew Green Advantage certified. They got the idea because of a spec requirement for Green Advantage certification. The specs on a 50,000 square foot office building they were constructing required that 30% of supervisors and tradespeople be Green Advantage certified. Achieving this specification requirement hit a home run. First, it helped them to meet and, in some cases, exceed the project's green goals. Second, they found that Green Advantage certification changed their workers' mindset and the overall culture of their company. It gave them greater awareness of green construction best practices, approaches, and technologies at the work site and in the office. Third, their investment in certification positioned them with a bidding advantage in future jobs. And fourth, as an added bonus, it enabled them to achieve a lead innovation credit associated with Green Advantage. Here's some more information about Green Advantage certification. Green Advantage is nationally recognized. Launched in 1997 with EPA funding, Green Advantage is the nation's longest standing green construction personnel certification. It has been formally recognized by USGBC and GBCI with a lead innovation credit has eight AIA continuing learning units associated with it, and it's recognized by other industry groups such as NAHB and ABC. Green Advantage certification standards are based upon foundational green building approaches, technologies, materials, and best practices. These standards were developed and approved by the nationally selected Green Advantage Certification Board. Input for the standards came from academic research and policy setting organizations, national and regional green building rating systems, standards and codes, workforce development groups, construction professionals, and other experts. Your inputs and suggestions are welcome to help with future updates. Green Advantage is complementary to LEED. The Green Advantage hands-on practical approach to successful green building help prompt the LEED Innovation Credit for using Green Advantage certified personnel on eligible projects. Rather than concentrating on how to keep score, Green Advantage helps field workers know how to play the game more effectively, boost the score, and improve green building performance. Green Advantage standards are relevant within, between, and across trades. They're designed to help individuals and crews achieve environmental and health goals, enhance crew collaboration, and reduce the risk associated with green building and bring projects in within budget. Green Advantage offers two levels of certification. Green Advantage Certified Associate, GACA, is targeted to tradespeople and other non-supervisory workers. Exam candidates need to be familiar with a variety of green approaches and technologies in addition to over 200 green construction best practices. Green Advantage Certified Practitioner, GACP, is a more advanced certification. This is a certification that is associated with the LEED Innovation Credit. 
is targeted to supervisory construction field personnel and those workers seeking supervisory positions. Exam candidates need to be familiar with a variety of green approaches and technologies in addition to over 600 green construction best practices. Today, some projects seek to achieve LEED certification, others green globes, still others living building challenge, passive house, ASHRAE 189.1, or IGCC compliance. Green Advantage certification is not tied to a particular green building rating system standard or code. Instead, Green Advantage certification positions workers to accomplish green building. Even if no formal green building award is targeted, Green Advantage credentialed crews are better prepared to make any project greener. Green Advantage does not require or offer training in order to sit for its exam. However, Green Advantage recommends that candidates take training to increase the likelihood of passing the exam. For example, contractors like Danny and Sally can control the time and place of training. They can hire a trainer to prepare their crew and subs. And in some cases, an educator already on staff provides training. This flexibility allows construction firms to schedule a group training that minimizes lost work time and creates a team approach to the process. Charles Kibbert, PE, PhD, a professor from the University of Florida, in 2009 oversaw pilot research about the effectiveness of Green Advantage certified personnel on construction projects. In July of 2012, Dr. Kibbert stated, quote, the findings from this research are important to all of us in the construction industry and confirm what has been expressed by project principals, architects, trainers, and others. Significant environmental, health, and attitudinal improvements can be attributed to the use of Green Advantage certified personnel. In addition, trends in this research showed that projects utilizing larger percentages of workers with this credential, greater than 30% of key supervisor personnel, are more likely to spot problems that would affect green building performance, identify cost-cutting opportunities, and increase the prospects of attaining lead certification at or higher than the level sought." Unquote. Sally and Danny also liked the fact that if they had five or more people wanting to sit for the exam, Green Advantage provides a proctor to enable them to take the exam at the same time in a convenient location. This approach encourages studying and team building. For those who wish to take the exam electronically, scheduling can be done through the Green Advantage website at over 300 exam centers throughout the U.S. Applicants can register through the Green Advantage website for $175. Registered candidates have one year to sit for the exam. Those registering receive a Green Advantage study guide related to GACA or GACP without additional charge. In this slide is a picture of the Lucy School. It is the first LEED Platinum School in Maryland. It scored 10 points higher than required to achieve this highest level of LEED certification. Two-thirds of the workers on the building were Green Advantage certified. The Ben E. Keith Food Distribution Center in Houston, Texas is under construction. This 300,000 square foot distribution center and 50,000 square foot administrative office project has 30% of its decision making personnel Green Advantage certified. Mark Uleman is senior project manager with Ben E. Keith. He is also acting as the general contractor for the project. Mark says, quote, when we embarked on this project, we wanted an effective way to communicate our sustainable principles to our subcontractors. Green Advantage fills this role perfectly. It provides a demonstrable way of bringing our subcontractors up to speed on sustainable practices and procedures they will experience on the project without getting lost in the complexity of the lead credits." Unquote. Green Advantage certified personnel can also benefit residential projects. The Glastown project is a 66,000 square foot multi-unit mixed-use residential property that achieved LEED Silver certification. Scott Kelly, who is quoted here in the slide, is a member of the Green Advantage Certification Board and a LEED Fellow. Note that he is particularly impressed with the health and safety benefits of Green Advantage certification to workers. 
The 25,000 square foot cap and aquatic center in Philadelphia at Overbrook School for the Blind is the first lead platinum natatorium. The publication Consulting Specifying Engineer described how many of the project's contractors help contribute to lead credits because of their Green Advantage certification. And now I'll pass the baton to James Brew. James? Thank you, Grady. So before I start talking a little bit about specifications um, as a certified construction specifier, I just want to say that uh, earlier this week I was chatting with a local architect in Boulder, Colorado, and he was complaining that he had selected subcontractors, you know, through a vetting process of, uh, of doing various green building projects for him over a number of years, but he also discovered that using the exact same subcontractor, in, in this case it was a plumbing subcontractor, um, resulted in different end products because the workers changed. And so I was telling him a little bit about Green Advantage and suggesting that, you know, had they had a Green Advantage certification program in place or a requirement in the specifications, you know, he might not have seen the problems occur with the exact same subcontractor. I know I've had the same experience myself. And so I think in our story of our fictional uh, general contractors, Danny and Sally's key to transition to a dark green firm was really when they discovered a requirement in specifications for uh, a green advantage certified personnel. And so this minor adjustment in specs, which by the way, most specifiers are quite used to specifying qualification requirements for tradespeople. So in my mind, green advantage speci specifying green advantage requirements is really not unlike specifying you know, qualifications for installers of roofing, windows, masonry, or whatever we might include on a project. So I think uh, Green Advantage has been very active working with a certified construction specifier to create language for specifying or requiring Green Advantage certified personnel on a project. And it's really a kit of parts that you can just insert into your, your existing specifications program or you can edit and tweak to your own needs. I should have pointed out on the earlier slide also that there was um, a link that is provided to the Green Advantage website where that specification language can be downloaded. And that language actually offers two options. And both of these options are actually lead innovation credit compliant. The GA30 is for supervisory personnel, and the GA3030 is for both supervisory personnel and tradespeople. The GA30 requires that 30% of supervisory personnel, such as foremen and project managers, be Green Advantage certified prior to and throughout the project. And the GA3030 has the exact same 30% supervisory personnel requirement, but it also enhances the team building by requiring 30% of the aggregate tradespeople who are non-supervisory to be Green Advantage certified prior to working on the project. Also, by trade, a 20% minimum helps ensure that Green Advantage certified workers are represented, are represented on all the trades working on the project. Everything that we could anticipate that you might need for procurement and kicking off a project is really in this specification kit. And the blue text, uh, which many of us specifiers are used to seeing in some of the various specifying toolkits out there, really just instructs you how to use the requirements. And the black text is actually the text you might insert into your, your contract documents. And the heart of the spec language is really the requirement for using Green Advantage field personnel standard in your project. And all the other language that revolves around procurement and bidding um, is really, really revolves around that piece, the, the personnel requirement. So depending on your preference, you could use tighter or more flexible requirements for your project. And really, you should understand that no matter what level of sustainability your project might be aiming for or which certification program, LEED or Green Globes, Passive House or, or any other rating or even standards and codes, the Green Advantage certified personnel requirement is of a benefit to projects, as indicated by the University of Florida study. And even standing alone, 
this requirement can help support sustainable design initiatives. It helps make sure that a project supervisory and trade personnel are educated about green building approaches and they learn hundreds of green building best practices. Back to you, Grady. Thanks, James. In today's presentation, Danny and Sally's company were our heroes, but there was another hero that propelled them to develop their very green corporate strategy, the specifier. The specifier played a key role in pushing them to prioritize making a commitment to Green Advantage certification for both their supervisors and workers. And certifying their personnel not only works for the one job specified, as we've mentioned, but it keeps working for every job they take on. Thanks for this opportunity to share this good news with you. We'd like to hear any additional questions or comments you'd like to make. Green Advantage is committed to constantly improving our offerings and services, so your input now or in the future is valuable. If you have suggestions for improving this specification or improving Green Advantage certification, please let us know. Thank you. Great. And thank you very much, Brady and James, for today's presentation. Uh, as Brady mentioned, we do ask for everybody to uh, give feedback. Um, both to ourselves at CSI and the practice group, as well as um, letting us know so we can pass on any comments you may have uh, to Green Advantage and to Grady and James. Uh, so with that, um, if you're watching this video on our YouTube channel, uh, feel free to leave comments in the section below. Or if you're watching this on the website, uh, please just email us at um, chapterrelations at csinet.org. With that, again, thank you, James, thank you, Grady, and thank you, Green Advantage, for today's presentation. And we look forward to hopefully building on this connection in the future.